thank you so much uh, sarah uh, thank you so much for joining in guys uh, it's the third time i am at uh, vrt so uh, let's let's go with this so i hope my screen is visible and uh, i hope uh, everyone knows me because you have joined this session so even a slightest of hint who i am who i am and what i do my name is sunil i am the uh, microsoft certified uh, power platform solution architect and i do a lot of uh, projects around power platform uh, solutioning majorly uh, which includes not just power platform but the integration with third party applications either with the by default connectors available even with uh, the on prem systems or even with the custom connectors which are there uh, that's my main bread and butter job and out of that uh, whenever i uh, get curious about any of the use case i try and accomplish that and then i make a tutorial or a video or a blog article or a simple post about that so uh, as part of that this was one of the use case which came across to me uh, over a year ago i had uh, done a blog about it article about it uh, which is already there on the linkedin but i thought let me go ahead and uh, share a quick video uh, as well and uh, go out as an event as well with this okay now my name is sunil as you already know i also uh, as known as also known as uh, power uh, trainer here are some of my uh, social media handles feel free to check those out and i do post videos on youtube as well if you like it feel free to uh, upload those and today's topic is around power platform uh, sharing power apps with external users now this is uh, one of the a uh, very genuine use case which we see across industry across different project across different clients when they say that uh, our power apps whatever we are building is not only going to be used by the uh, internal users but we have to make them uh, available to the external users as well now this feature is there from in in power apps for more than 2 years now this was there from the starting as well how to accomplish that we will quickly see that this is this particular event is going to be a very simple event a very simple showcase a demo where i will be showcasing uh, creating an application and we'll go through the steps how we actually go ahead and share with the users external users and how external users will be able to use these apps right we'll talk about a license we'll talk about the licensing also a little bit at the end of it that will give you a better idea as well from that perspective too i will quickly go ahead and uh, bring my other screen here so this is uh, this is me in my particular one tenant this is tenant one you can say uh, which is power trainer tenant okay here what i have is one simple sharepoint site created and there is this one list created out of this now this particular demo is based on uh, sharepoint but this can be done even on dataverse even on sql as well or any other database if you have it it is as similar as in this way it can be done for them as well it's just that the security will be handled in a different way for those uh, databases okay uh, so this is one tenant the other one which i have is uh, this one so this is the other tenant which i have this is one of my acquaintances uh, tenant uh, with the name fusion dev works and i have requested him to give me an account there so that i can go ahead with this demo uh, my other tenant is not in uh, use because i wasn't using it and microsoft did shut that down uh, that's what we do <laughs> and we are not using the resources uh, uh, in in a rightful manner okay so this is my sharepoint list one of the sharepoint site one of the sharepoint list i'll just go ahead quickly go ahead and create an application out of this i'm not going to go ahead this is one just way of creating an a, a power app okay now there are whole lot of different ways to create power apps you know copilot is also the latest one but this is one of the way to create a power app what it does quickly spins up power apps maker studio and uh, it it is by default connected with the data source or the list which we have selected it will quickly spin up a power app simple looking mobile screen power apps uh here let's take a quick couple of seconds 
once it is done uh, what we will do is we will quickly test this application will not make many of the changes here right now if you will see even the uh, even the list does not have any records here similarly the app is also not showing any records here we'll just quickly go ahead and create one record for that matter okay i'll just put the same as uh, description here select the priority if I have any attachment, I can do that. Otherwise, I'll quickly go ahead and say. So this is one of the list item which is created. If you will see in the back end, this list item will be created automatically. Hopefully, it should be because this is the only list which is connected to the Power Apps. If you can see here, the record is also created and even it shows who has created that record. Right now. One quick thing which I want to do, not right now, but I will do it later so that we understand why we are doing that as well. Okay, so this is the Power Apps which is created right now, and I will quickly go ahead. Uh, the name of the Power Apps is HAP, which is not a great name. I will go ahead and name it as uh, Tickets App. Externally shared tickets app. I'll just quickly name it like that. So once I get this name reflecting here, I will go ahead and publish this application. I'm not going to change any other aspect of it. Once it is published. I'll quickly go ahead to the environment and we'll quickly see that as well. So this is the application which is already created here. Now, hmm, how do we share it with external user? This is already created. Internal users will be able to use it if you go ahead and share it with internal users. But to share it with external user, the first thing first we need to have is we have to invite the external users as a guest user to this tenant. How do we do that? Not everyone will be having access to this. So this is Azure portal, uh, Enter ID portal as it is renamed. And it is also shown as Azure Active Directory is now Microsoft Enter ID. So this is a user tab in here. I can see all users here. What I have done, I went ahead and added this user. This is the user as a guest. How do we do that? We click, we click on a uh, new user, invite external users. As soon as we click on external user, here we have to provide the email ID of the external user. Right? So once we provide the email ID of external user, we provide rest of the other things as well. Send invite message, make sure this is checked because this is how they will be able to accept the invite also. Once you, the minimum thing which we need to add here is the email address and display name. That's pretty much it. Though it is not mentioned as mandatory, but still it is uh, it, it is going to be relevant and recommended to be uh, added. And then quickly you can click on a review and invite. As soon as you do that, what the other party will receive is they will receive an email to get the to start the uh, to accept the invitation from this portal. What they do, they just have to accept that invite the other party. I will quickly see that if I have that email still. One second. Okay, this is how this email looks like. Okay. This is how the email looks like. And uh, when they click on accept invitation, they will be invited to the tenant. Automatically, what will happen? In this way, the where is it? So as you can see in this way, their user will be created here and they will be marked as guest users. Okay. This is identity is external uh, Azure AD. And it also shows how it has been created, invitation based. So this is what we have to do. This is the first thing first. Okay. For any external user to be able to access the application. Now, second thing is either now any of the external user need to have the base license to 
access the power power apps or power automate right what is that license that license is any of the office 365 license or dynamics license okay? either e3 e1 or e5 they need that first of all now when they now this can be uh, this can be tagged or this can be assigned by their parent organization also or even by the uh, organization which is inviting them to their organization okay now in this case either my organization can go ahead and assign the uh, base license first which is microsoft ec e3, microsoft 365 e3 or e5 any one of it or the parent organization of this user can also do that which is fusion dev works in this particular case right in this particular case, this user already has this Microsoft 365 uh, base license. OK, now um, as we have used SharePoint as the database for this application, and this application is not a premium application, hence the base license would work in this particular case. But if this database would have been Dataverse or SQL or any other for that matter, OK, in that particular case, either the parent organization of the user have to give them the specific uh, premium license or per app license. Uh, per app license will be assigned from this uh, environment itself, from the uh, organization which is inviting the user. But from their organization, if they want to access, their organization can have them uh, Power Apps premium license. Okay, so this is one of the catch here. But in this particular case, we don't need this for this particular demo. So in this particular case, uh, this user is already part of the uh, Active Directory now. OK, and now if I go to the application. This is the application. What we have to do is in the similar simple way how we used to share. The user share the application with the user. Now there is a catch here. One thing is we have to share the application first, right? I'll just search for Sunil. You can see it is also mentioning Sunil as guest. Okay. This also need, if you can see here, data permission. It also needs the permission to this. In this particular case, we have to maintain this explicitly. We have to share this uh, access to this particular list explicitly to this user. But if this would have been Dataverse, we could have chosen the security role directly from here automatically with that specific table. What I will do, I'll quickly share the app first with the user. While it's updating this, I'll go to the SharePoint list. There are two ways to share the list also. One is sharing the complete site, which is not recommended. Obviously, this is not an enterprise solution, so never try this in a production environment. This is just a, a demo and a PUC, you can say. Other way to share it is the list specifically. How do we do that? Go to the list, click on permissions for this list. First thing first, what I have done is I have broken the permission, broken the inheritance. Second thing, I have added that member in owners for now. It can be added in uh, edit editor uh, as an editor also, member also. This is the user which I have added in the owners for now. Now, we can see the application is shared, the email invitation, always make sure that this is checked because this is the only way, the mail is the only way how user will be able to go and uh, access this application. That is uh, way there. That is the way there. Now, let's go to the user tenant now, the, the other tenant. Now, if you will see in the inbox, there is another email that Sunil Kumar has shared and shared, externally shared tickets app with you. Okay, so this is the application. If I click run on app, runs app, I will be able to run this application. Now it will check if this is the uh, simple dialog box, which always comes as an uh, consent. I click allow. This is the first time it so so it is taking time. So right now you will see that the other ticket which is created by Sunil is also showing up here. We can always have this gallery filtered out based on the logged in user so that it will not show. That was what I was trying to do earlier, but 
let's say another one shipping address correction okay strangely this is not showing I'm not sure why it was not showing in the drop down, but when I selected, it is able to select. So now you can see that uh, this is uh, created here. Now let's go back to our main tenant and we'll see if uh, we see the ticket there or not. Okay. I'll quickly play this application directly from here. And while we are doing that, we can also see in the backend as well. Tickets list. So if you can see here, this is created by the guest user. And this is the ticket which has been created by them. Another record which has been, which has been added by them. Similarly, user can also see it here. Now let's go quickly one second and I'll refresh this and just mention that uh, filter tickets list. So here I have to add another filter so that I can add. I'll not do it right now anyways, but that's that's another filter we can add to this gallery based on the logged in user. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it, which I wanted to showcase in today's uh, uh, session and another thing which I will quickly show you also is that one second. I just want to uh, plug in the the blog also, which has been already there. So this is the blog. If you will quickly. Go ahead and see on the LinkedIn if you can, uh, you will be able to find. I'll obviously share the link as well. This has the step by step process as well on how we can achieve that. Right? How to assign the license and all. So, this is it, which I wanted to showcase. Any question, any query you have, uh, I'm open to those and uh, I'll be able to answer those for you. Thanks, Sunil. Um, there's a couple of hands up uh, if you want to work through. Yes, yes, please. The bear? I'm not sure. That one's been up for a while. <laughs> Go ahead, Zubair. If you have any query, feel free. Yes, I Okay, I have one uh, to share this app. Uh, without uh, inviting the action user. For example, publicly, if I want to make mm -hmm. a form that will be accessible for the public users. Mm -hmm. So, like, for, for example, I have a requirement. I want to make this form public. If I want to mm -hmm. deploy this form publicly, or if I want to get some input from the public user. So, is it possible to do so? Okay. Uh, okay. For, to answer this, we have to go to the basics of Power Apps first. Okay. I'll take you back a little bit and then I'll uh, able to uh, then I'll be able to answer to this, which will be a, a logical answer in that case. Okay. <clears throat> so Power Apps is a user-based application, first of all. Okay. Now, when it is a user-based application, definitely it needs an authenticated user to access it. Okay. When it needs an authenticated user to access it. The authentication happens only via one way, which is Azure Active Directory, which is Enter ID. Okay. If we don't have that there, user will not be able to access it. So I hope this answers your question. What is the way? Okay. What is the way how we can make uh, something for them or to be publicly available? There are two ways to do it. Obviously, there are three ways to do it. Let me go to one by one on those one is you can create and uh, create a sharepoint site which is externally enabled externally shared okay publicly available however this is not a recommended way but i'm just sharing all the ways uh, here 
okay and let them access the uh, the list there directly and add them there are a lot of cons in this solutioning i'll let you uh, go ahead and uh, see those okay second as creating a power pages form okay power pages is another tool which is specifically for these kind of scenarios wherein user wants to or user can have the publicly access available and they can uh, enter some data and organization can capture it however power pages also runs on two different licensing model for consumer endpoint one is on uh, the authenticated user basis and one is on anonymous user basis so always you can choose the anonymous uh, user based they can go ahead and fill the form third one is uh, microsoft forms anonymously user can go ahead and fill the form they can uh, enter the data which organization will be able to receive on the other hand the anonymous forms does not give access to add the attachments okay so make sure yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yes. actually this is what my this is what i was talking about because the attachment basically we cannot add in the yes. microsoft form so how can we capture that requirement let's suppose if you want the attachment also from the mm -hmm. public user Okay, I have not tried it, uh, but I'm not sure if Microsoft Forms Pro is an answer to this. I'll leave it to you to go ahead and uh, test it. Or if anyone else in this group who is very well versed with that area, maybe can answer uh, on behalf of me. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move forward. Uh, yes, Samir, please. Uh, yeah, so you mentioned that um, either the parent organization will provide the user with the license or you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to know whether the, the user is already licensed to use Power Apps? So we're not assigning the license uh, twice. Hmm. Uh, that that can only be given, that information can only be given by their parent organization only. Gotcha. Right. Okay, now there is another way also, okay? There is another way to let user access the application, which I mentioned is on the uh, per app basis. Right. But but that per app license. Now there is a uh, a good thing about per app license is that that particular license or passes are assigned to the uh, tenant, to the tenant, and then to the environment. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, which is this environment? This environment is the environment from where the application is getting shared by the external user. Okay. So in this right. particular case, those app passes or that particular license has to be acquired by the uh, by the sender organization, I would say. I'm not sure how to name it, but by the root organization who wants to share the app with the external yeah. user. So that has to be provided by them. Okay, because right. it is it is environment based. It's not environment right. and then user based basically. So as gotcha. soon as One more the question app passes are assigned to the environment, whenever the user open that application, automatically the pass is assigned to that user. Got you. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. Um, Apart from the look and feel, uh, when you, we compare Power Apps and Power Pages, and hmm. then the, the, the kind of the, the basic hmm. differences between them, is there any benefit of doing it this way instead of going uh, using Power Pages? Okay. Uh, Power so Pages is, a, is uh, yeah. So the these two are not competitor to each other. Right, these are complementing to each other always. Right, there is a specific use case which is for Power Apps, be it for Power Apps Canvas or for Power Apps model driven application, and there is a specific set of uh, scenarios where Power Pages is the best fit. Now, so what are those scenarios? I'll give you a couple of those scenarios. For Power Pages, those scenarios are, for example, if an organization wants to build a catalog of properties. Right, catalog of their items, what they produce in their in their organization, with the basic details of that, and they want to capture some feedback, simple forms like that. Right now, this is I'm talking from the out of box 
power pages building right yeah. power pages can be equally done in a pro code way also which from the client side we can use javascript and jquery from the server side we can use liquid right okay. so so that is another way of uh, using uh, uh, the pro code way of uh, doing the power pages the look and feel everything will be uh, as it is a pro code so we can make whatever we want to make it is it is like that and one of the best example i have seen uh, for so power what, pages what customization is a uh, scottish summit uh, site website so the summit website what type of data we can take as an input so scottish summit summit website is one of the best example of power pages uh, website now oh, when yeah. we talk now when we talk about power apps specifically power apps specifically was built uh, either from to to give users uh, a pixel perfect way to create their applications right and the other way is the model driven application which is based on the data model especially which is obviously power apps canvas has a client facing more client facing way to uh, work towards and the power apps model driven is more towards the uh, the back end members right it is more towards that so yeah eventually i would say that these are complementing each other but there are many functionalities which power apps provide but power pages are not able to do that for example camera control for example the 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 pen and pen input control right so these are not available on power pages so here and there we have to always decide on what is the what's actually required in the use case and then based on that we can go ahead and decide amazing thank you so much sunil thank you thank you so much. uh yes zubair go yeah ahead. so in power pages basically what type of information we can take as an input from the public users like uh, what are the features for example mm. if i want to uh the users to upload a re attachment so are they able to do so or no like in um, have i have not tried it with public users uh but i have tried uh, the the data part with public users those they are able to do i am 100% not sure on the attachment part actually maybe i'll have to look that into and then i'll be able to answer that for you Okay. Yes, Vinay. Yes, Sunil. I means I don't have any question. I just wanted to answer the question. Uh, question for the Yeah, we can use attachment in Power Pages for public users as well. Yeah, for public user as oh, well. That's great. With that's the great. on a yeah, that will not be for the authenticated user if you don't Anonymous want to consume user. license. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, Sunil, if 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 it's possible, I mean, it will be great if we can have this similar kind of scenario with the power pages, because mm -hmm. that's what I have been observing with my career that there are a lot of clients uh, who are mm -hmm. who are asking to build the pages where they can just expose few of their datas mm -hmm. through power pages. Means I have been exploring it, but I could not find any relevant or more uh, developer okay. friendly resources available online. That's why I'm requesting it. Means if we can have any references, that will be really helpful for uh, all the Understood. developers and architects. Understood. Understood. I'll definitely have to work on that, and uh, hopefully soon I'll be able to share that. However, on the other hand, just unrelated, uh, there is another uh, blog up on uh, my LinkedIn around uh, integration of Power Pages with SharePoint uh, to to store the documents. So. Maybe you can have a look. That might give you another perspective if that is uh, if that is required in in your use case. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank. You. Okay. I think we uh, are just, good. Just uh, speaking of Scottish summit, <laughs> are you going? Oh no! Unfortunately, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, okay. I really is want any... to actually, but yeah. I have a lot of work to do right now. There's lots of people coming over for it. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be a busy one. Okay. It would but, have been uh, great. Yeah, I was talking to someone about it actually earlier. I need to get my ticket for the um, 
the, the quiz, <laughs> the cabaret. I'll be gutted if I miss out and they sell out my tickets. Um, but yeah, I think Franco built that Power Pages site, did he? Is that Franco's yes, work? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It, it's Franco, so yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he has put in a lot of efforts there. Yes, uh, I he, I was in one of the event when he was speaking, and he did mention that he also showed like how he has built it from where all he has picked those bootstrap controls, and uh, that's a lot of work. I I cannot imagine doing that, but yeah, yeah, I, I really I appreciate them creating a kind of a showcase uh, for us specifically. I I always take that as one of the showcase whenever I'm talking about power pages. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he knows his stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. I think him and him and Rory are doing a session, I think. Um, yes, that was a session with Rory and Franco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is funny, funny pair. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back. And, Thank um, you so yeah, much. Let's do it again soon. Definitely. Fourth time, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah, for All this. Right, and thank, thank you so you. much, everyone, to joining in. And uh, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Yes, you too. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Anil. Thank you.